He told them that when the storm wind had snatched him away, it carried him away where it carried him. And he was there in that place and sustained himself with what he found there until he came to the sea of milk. He understood that this sea was certainly made from his mother's milk, for the milk certainly pressured her, and that is how the sea came about. He settled there on the sea of milk and was nourished by the milk until these countrymen came and took him up as a king. Then they went onward and came to a country and they asked, who is your king? They replied that they had chosen for themselves that murder is the goal. They accepted a certain murderer as king. Then they found a woman sitting in a sea of blood, so they took her up as king because they saw that she is surely a very great murderer since she is seated in an ocean of blood. They also asked for an audience with her, and they went and announced. They entered into her, and this was the aforementioned queen who keeps crying constantly, and her tears come to be the sea of blood mentioned. They recognized each other, and there was certainly a very great celebration there, albeit they still wept that they still did not know of the king. They went onward and came to a certain country. They asked, who is your king? They replied that they had chosen for themselves as a king a certain honorable person, a person who has honor, as mentioned, because for them, the main purpose is honor. Then they found, sitting in a field, an old man wearing a crown on his head. They were very pleased with him, for he is a dignitary, for he sits in a field adorned with a crown, and they accepted him as king. They realized that this certainly their king himself, this is certainly their king himself, and they also asked if it was possible to have an audience with him. They went and announced, and they entered into him, and recognized that he is the king himself. And the rejoicing that was there is certainly inconceivable. And the foolish gods the very wealthy ones from the land of riches who went with them were traveling with them and for the life of themselves they knew absolutely nothing about what was happening why there is so much happiness here and now the entire holy community was recovered and had gathered united together that is the king and the holy people. They sent the prayer leader to all the countries, the countries of all the factions that had each chosen for itself a bad thing as their goal, as mentioned, to correct them and to purify them, to lead them out of their error, each country out of its vice and its nonsense. For they had all become deluded, as mentioned. And now the prayer leader certainly had the power to go to them and turn them around to the right way, for he had received power and permission from the kings of all the lands, since here were all their kings, as mentioned, because the king and his people who had come together, they all were the kings of all the lands of the factions mentioned above. The prayer leader went with their power to purify them and bring them back in Teshuva, repentance. The warrior spoke with the king regarding the country that is so fallen into the idolatry of money. The warrior said to the king, I heard from you that through, that through the way 
that I have to the sword through it. It is possible to extract someone who has fallen into the idolatry of money. The king answered him, Yes, it is so. The king told the warrior the thing, how one can take them out of the desire of money through that way, inasmuch as on the way where he goes to the sword, there is a way on the side. By this way, one comes to a fiery mountain, and on this mountain crouches a lion, and the lion, when he needs to eat, goes and falls upon the flocks, and takes for himself sheep and cattle, and eats them up. And the shepherds know of this, and guard the sheep intensely from him, yet the lion does not pay any attention to this. Just whenever he wants to eat, he falls on the flocks, and the shepherds bang and strike and storm at him. The lion, however, does not hear this at all. He just takes sheep and cattle for himself, and roars and eats them. And the mountain of fire is entirely invisible. In other words, there is a mountain of fire there, only one does not see it. And moreover, from the side there is yet another way. With this way, one comes to a place called Kech, Kech, the kitchen. There, and there, in that kitchen, there are all sorts of food. And in the kitchen, there is no fire whatsoever, rather. The foods are all cooked by way of the fiery mountain mentioned above. And the fiery mountain is very far from there. But the channels and pipes go from the fiery mountain to the kitchen. And there, thereby, all the foods are cooked. And the kitchen, too, is not at all visible. But there is a sign, an indication. There are birds standing there on the kitchen and and through them one knows that the kitchen is there and the birds hover with their wings and they thereby kindle the fire that is by the birds flapping they blow on and, and inflame the fire and also by their very flapping they put out the fire so that the fire should not flame too strongly more than necessary and they blow on the fire according to what is necessary for the foods, that is, for one food, such a fire is needed, and for another food, a different fire is needed, all according to the food. So the birds blow on the, on the fire. The king told all this to the warrior.